Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Yes, it's time once again for Eve Arden in another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, the football fever is sweeping through our schools once more, and Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English, is no exception. No, indeed. Most of the kids at Madison eat, sleep, and talk nothing but football. Of course, it doesn't affect me one way or another. When I start my class in the morning, I simply bark the signal for order, call my monitors into a huddle, and with a single wing to the right, do a reverse line buck through the second act of Macbeth. <laughs> Last Wednesday, when Walter Denton, one of my pupils, joined my landlady, Mrs. Davis, and me at breakfast, I chided him about not doing his homework properly. His reaction was instantaneous. I don't see how you can say that, Miss Brooks. Why, ever since the fall term started, I've been doing my football religiously. <laughs> State rests. No, are you not quite sure, Walter, that those little coffee cakes and some milk will be enough for you? No, ma'am. <laughs> That's all I've got in the house Oh, then it'll be enough <laughs> This boy's a realist I wish I had something else to offer you A growing boy should eat a big breakfast Especially an athlete like Walter Athlete? Yeah, I told Mrs. Davis about it before you came into breakfast, Miss Brooks I'm going out for the team this year I've just got to get my letter You? But Walter, you don't seem to have too much aptitude for athletics Who hasn't? Well, the only reason I didn't make the football team last year was be because I hurt my arm trying out for the baseball team. <laughs> Did you make the baseball team, dear? Well, no, Mrs. Davis, but only because I hurt my foot trying to get my M in track. <laughs> and I'd have made that, too, if my ribs weren't so sore from water polo. Well, that's one thing about Walter. If he doesn't get his M from Madison, he'll get it from the Mayo Brothers Clinic. <laughs> But maybe you'll be luckier this season, Walter. Now, as soon as you finish moistening your fingers and picking cake crumbs off the tablecloth, we can get started for school. Okay, Miss Brooks. Gee, if I do make the team, I'll be playing alongside my pal Stretch Snodgrass. He's one of the best athletes Madison ever had, you know. Really? Sure. He's a three-letter man. He's a three-letter man in my English class, too. After A, B, and C, he's a goner. <laughs> Well, we're almost there, Miss Brooks. We'll park down by the athletic field, if you don't mind. Stretch might be working out early this morning. All right, Walter. You're certainly fond of the kid, aren't you? Yeah, he's my buddy, Miss Brooks. And I want you to know that we're sure grateful to you for keeping him eligible this year. Gosh, if you didn't help him with his studies after school, I don't know what would happen. I do. <laughs> well, here's the football field. I'll just roll up these windows and lock the door... <laughs> Well, you've got the ball. Why aren't you running with it? <laughs> Gee, it came right through the window. Are you all right, Miss Brooks? If I am, I owe it all to my shatterproof skin. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, folks. I don't usually kick them that crooked. Oh, that's okay, Stretch. Gosh, look at all that glass. Lucky the laces weren't cut. That football is school property. <laughs> well, I'm school property, too. Let's take a look at my laces. <laughs> Well, I'm sure glad you're okay, Miss Brooks. Well, the reason I'm working out this early is because they're remodeling my room at home, and I had to sleep on our drafty back porch, and I got a bad king in my leg. You got a king in your leg? <laughs> yeah, you know, like when you pull a lingament. <laughs> yeah, those lingaments can sure cause a lot of trouble. your room, Stretch? Well, you know, our living quarters are behind my father's pet shop. Yeah? And Dad got a big shipment of marmosets in the other day, and he needs more space. But it's only temporary. It'll take a few weeks to switch the bedrooms around, then I'll be back indoors again. Yeah, but meantime, you can get a bad draft and pull another lingament. <laughs> <laughs> or even bruise a tendon. <laughs> no kidding, Stretch. You've got to find another place to sleep. Walter's right, Stretch. Wait a minute. Haven't you got an aunt who lives alone? You mean the one you met at the movies the other night? Yes. She seemed inordinately fond of you. Oh, that's just the way she acts. She really likes me. <laughs> but 
She lives way out on Clark Street. That's halfway to Clay City. Look, if you're worried about getting to school in the morning stretch, I'll be happy to pick you up and drive you in. After all, if we're going to be on a football team together, we'll be practicing a lot in the mornings. Gee, that's awful nice of you, Walter. I'll call Aunt Mimi before school this morning. I'm sure she won't mind, and then I'll have my dad move my things out there in our truck. Oh, great. Maybe the marmosets would carry them over for you. <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you got the idea for me to move, Miss Brooks. That porch is pretty drafty. Well, I'm going to practice a little while longer. Well, how about you, Walter? Want to work out? Oh, sure, Stretch. How about you, Miss Brooks? Want to watch? No, thanks, Walter. I'd better get into school. Mr. Conklin wants to see me before my first class. Well, okay, but you don't know what you're missing. Old Stretch here sure has an educated toe. Good. Let's, let's hope it may one day spread to his brain. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I've summoned you here to my office to commend you for the splendid work you're doing with Stretch Snodgrass. Well, thank you, Mr. Conklin. But you've got to keep that boy eligible for football. If Madison's team doesn't make a presentable showing this season, I'll never hear the end of it from Jason Brill. Clay City's principal? The same. He's the bane of my existence, Miss Brooks. We've been rivals a good many years. Oh, even before you were principals of rival schools? Before we were teachers. Even in state normal, I found him abnormal. <laughs> He'll go to any lengths to defeat and embarrass me. Now, Brill phoned me last night and said he'd be dropping in to see me this morning. He said he'd have a juicy bit of news for me. Well, if he thinks he's got juicy news for me, I've got still juicier news for him. Do you know what it is, Miss Brooks? You're opening an orange aid stand. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned that Biff Mooney, one of the greatest college football players, is interested in a high school coaching job in this part of the country. I've already opened negotiations for his services by mail, and it's a foregone conclusion that he'll accept my offer. <laughs> uh, I can't wait until I see the expression on Brill's face when I tell him about it. <laughs> <laughs> States, that laugh would be banned. Uh, come in. Well, good morning, Osgood. Good morning to you, Jason. I have a juicy bit of news for you this morning. Well, I have a juicy bit of news for you too, Osgood. Uh, oh, pardon me. How are you, Miss Brooks? Juicy, thanks. <laughs> Osgood, I've just signed Biff Mooney to coach the Clay City football team this season. Well, isn't that nice? Now I'll just tell you what I've got up my... Biff Mooney! Mr. Conklin, remember that expression you were waiting to see on Mr. Brill's face? Yes? You're wearing it. Now see here, Brill. In the first place, I don't believe a man like Mooney would be knucklehead enough to sign with your outfit. But even if he has... A good coach can't make a team without material. Material? Why, last season our backs went through your line like it was damp cheesecloth. Well, it's not going to be that way this season, Mr. Brill. Uh, go ahead, Miss Brooks. Tell him. This season it's going to be dry cheesecloth. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some great players on the squad. Players like Stretch Snodgrass. Stretch Snodgrass? Who's he? <laughs> That's him. <laughs> what was that? Pardon me, Osgood. Is that a football in your lap, or have you gone off your diet? <laughs> I've told those kids a thousand times to go... Come in. Well, I'm awful sorry, Mr. Conklin, but I'm afraid I kicked my football in here. I'm afraid you did, Stretch, but I don't understand why. I thought I told you to confine your practicing to the other end of the field. But I did, Mr. Conklin. That's where I kicked it from. Well, there's absolutely no excuse in the world for... Nice kick, boy! <laughs> you mean to tell me that that ball was propelled here by that boy's foot? It wasn't flown here by one of his blue jay corn plasters. <laughs> that, Mr. Brill, is our Stretch Snodgrass, one of the greatest triple threat quarterbacks in the country. Stretch, this is Mr. Brill, principal of Clay City High. Hi, sir. Hello, son. <laughs> you tell me, where did you learn to kick like that? Oh, it's just natural with me, I guess. But if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss football no more this morning. I just got some bad news about my pal, Walter Denton. He's been cut off the football squad. 
Why, Stretch? Because he was the 29th man on it, and we only got 28 uniforms. Well, it would be a little embarrassing if he were sent in as a substitute. <laughs> I don't see how a spindly pippet like Denton could go out for the team in the first place. He couldn't carry a football in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Please, Mr. Conklin, you're talking about my pal. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me. Gosh, when he heard I was moving out to my aunt's place on Clark Street, he even offered to pick me up every morning. Uh, did you say you were moving to Clark Street? Yes, sir. It's way out in the 3900 block. Yeah, but that's halfway to Clay City. Why, you're in a district that... Why don't we have lunch together this afternoon, boy? <laughs> say, in the school cafeteria? About 12? Just the two of us? From the picture you were meant for me? <laughs> now, see here, Brill. Yeah, tell me, I... boy, do you kick them that far often? Well, without I should do any boasting, I almost never done no kicking which the ball don't travel over 70, 80 yards hardly. Amazing. And how do you pass? In English, by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. And remember, Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. <laughs> All during my morning classes, I worried about Jason Brill having lunch with Madison Star quarterback. When I communicated my fears to Mr. Conklin, he said... Miss Brooks, we've got to find out what that blackguard is up to at all costs. So when lunch period finally rolled around, I followed the blackguard into the school restaurant and borrowed an apron from one of the girls behind the steam table. Uh, come over here to this corner table, Stretch. We won't be disturbed here. Okay, Mr. Brill. Yeah. Now, sit down, my boy. Now then, there's something I must talk to you about in strictest confidence. In strictest confidence? It concerns your football career. Who gets the lima beans? Uh, <laughs> Miss Brooks, I, I thought this was a self-service cafeteria. Oh, it is, Mr. Brill, except when we have a distinguished visitor like yourself. Then I like to see that he's well taken care of. Uh. I brought you each the blue plate. Just what I wanted, succotash and lima beans. Thanks, Miss Brooks. You're perfectly welcome, Stretch. Now, please continue with your confidential conversation, gentlemen. You were saying, Mr. Brill, that you wanted yeah, to... I uh, wanted to tell you what a lovely day it is. Uh, sun shining, not a bit humid, although cumulus clouds do seem to be gathering in the east. In fact, it looks like we might be in for a bit of a blow. This is going to be a weather report. I might as well blow, too. I'll go get some dessert for you. Yeah, do that. And now then, Stretch, I'll come right to the point. In your present address on Clark Street, you're eligible to enter Clay City High, and that's what I want you to do. Transfer immediately. Transfer? From Madison? Exactly. You said yourself that your pal Walter Denton couldn't get on your football team because there's no uniform for him. Isn't that right? Yeah, but... Well, every American boy should have the right to play football. <laughs> Shouldn't he? Of course he should. Now, with you off the Madison team, there'd be another uniform available for Walter. Well, I never thought of it like that. Well, think of it. <laughs> Gee, on account of me, Walter won't get to play at all. He'll never get his letter in. Gosh, fine pal I am. Yes, I don't know why he even talks to you. Now, Stretch, I've got to get back to Clay City High at once, but I've arranged for our new coach, Biff Mooney, to meet you outside your main gate after school. Biff Mooney? 
Is he your new coach? Yeah, of course. Now, Biff will accompany you to your parents' stretch and get their consent to the transfer. It's just a formality, you understand. Yes, sir. I guess if it's going to help Walter, I'll have to do it. Mm. But I hate to think of what Mr. Conklin will say when he hears about this. Oh, forget about Mr. Conklin. We know that what we're doing is right. It's for our pal's happiness. There's absolutely no reason to be afraid of Mr. Conklin. Then I'll go right down and ask him for the transfer. You wait, boy. Wait till I get out of the building. <laughs> You see, Mr. Conklin, every time I got near the table, they were talking about the weather. Ah, well, perhaps our fears were exaggerated, Miss Brooks. Granted, Brill might try to get away with something. Oh, come in. Well, it's Stretch Snodgrass. Come right in, my boy. Sit down. Here, take my chair. Sit by the window. Shall I open it for you? Do you want the fan on? Hot towel? Pedicure? <laughs> Mr. Conklin... You don't know what I'm here for. If you're worried about that window you broke this morning, forget it. What a kick that was. <laughs> Thanks, but, but you still don't know what I want, Mr. Conklin. Name it and it's yours. What is it you want, my boy? I want to transfer to Clay City High. Certainly. I'll just sit down at my desk, get a pen and fill out the necessary... A transfer to Clay City High! <laughs> Cotton, gauze, penicillin. <laughs> that pirate! What poppycock did Brill feed you at lunch, Stretch? Well, he didn't feed me no poppycock. It, it was, was succotash. succotash. <laughs> well, he can't get away with it this time. No matter what he told you, you can't transfer to Clay City. You don't live in their district. Well, I do now. What? Well, I usen't to, but I do now. <laughs> you see, sir, I've moved in with my aunt, and she lives right near Clay City. Moved in with your aunt? And whose bright idea was that? If you'll excuse me, I'm going to lie down somewhere. <laughs> Miss Brooks! In front of a streetcar, I think. <laughs> well, let me explain, Mr. Conklin. Stretch was sleeping in a draft, and I thought it would That's be so much... That's your trouble, Miss Brooks. You think too much. Stretch, do your parents know about this transfer yet? No, sir. They just know I'm going to live with Aunt Mamie. But I'm meeting Biff Mooney after school, and he's going to ask them for their permission. Stretch, let me ask you a question. In all the years you've been here, Mr. Conklin has always treated you fairly, hasn't he? I'll rephrase the question. <laughs> in fact, I'll forget it. <laughs> Just promise me that you'll drop into my classroom after school today. Sure, Miss Brooks. That is, if somebody will tell Biff Mooney to wait for me. We'll take care of Biff, Stretch. Now, remember, I want you to come to my classroom immediately after school. Okay, Miss Brooks. See you later. Right, Stretch. Bye, Mr. Conklin. Not goodbye, Stretch. Just... Aloha. <laughs> yeah. Well, Miss Brooks, it was you who got us into this situation. And I... I'll get us out of it. And I think I can, Mr. Conklin. I think I've got a plan. A plan? Supposing, instead of being taken to Stretch's house, Biff Mooney were taken to my house. I don't understand. Stretch wouldn't take him to your house. No, the real Stretch wouldn't. And Stretch's real parents won't be there either. But Biff Mooney doesn't know Stretch from a hole in the ground, does he? Well, come in. Oh, it's Walter Denton. I was just looking for Harriet Knight. Mr. Conklin, that... shake hands with a hole in the ground. <laughs> I just can't believe that you're Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, sure I am, Mr. Mooney. Who did you think was? Well, you just don't sound like Mr. Brill said you would. The way he described it, you talked, well, differently. What's the way I talk got anything to do with? Gee, I ain't never said nothing to get insulted for it by nobody, hardly. <laughs> I take it all back. <laughs> well, this is the house, Mr. Mooney. Come on in. My old lady always leaves the door open for me. All right, Stretch. Oh, there's my dear old mom in the rocker. Mom, I want you should meet Biff Mooney. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance, Mrs. Snodgrass. Likewise, I'm sure, Mr. Mooney. Uh, if you'll pardon my saying so, ma'am, you seem hardly old enough to be the mother of such a big boy. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> now, what can we do for you, Coach? A coach? Well, how did you know I was a football coach? Well, it's a cinch you don't crochet no doilies for a living. <laughs> <laughs> A built on him. <laughs> he wants me to transfer from Madison to Clay City High, Ma. 
Oh, now that's a serious step. I know it is, Mrs. Slavkas. <laughs> you see, it, it's for the boy's own good, and that's why I'm here today, to get you to acquiesce. Stretch, this guy's getting fresh. Trun him out. <laughs> Don't you see, ma'am? We, we just want your sanction. My what? Uh, you're okay. You're okay, too, but what do you want? <laughs> we, we want Stretch to transfer to Clay City High. Well, I don't know. This here Madison learns him pretty good. I think we'll keep him where he's at. Oh, please, Mrs. Snodgrass, now don't, don't be hasty. Maybe we should discuss this with Mr. Snodgrass as well. Oh, sure. Pop's right in the next room. I'll call him. Come on in here, Pop! <laughs> Meet the little man, Mr. Mooney. Oh, I'm delighted to know you, Mr. Snodgrass. Yous are too kind. <laughs> I'd like to get your permission for Stretch to transfer to Clay City High, Mr. Snodgrass. Oh, it's a wonderful school. Nothing and... doing. Transfers is for streetcars. <laughs> no, no, our boy wouldn't be happy in no Clay City High. That their school just don't offer no advantages, no how. They don't offer nothing, no how. Well, I don't see how you folks can, folks can talk like this. Believe me, it ain't easy. <laughs> I gotta go get supper ready, Pa. You get rid of, uh, say goodbye to Mr. Mooney for me whenever he leaves. Like, right away, I hope. <laughs> okay, Ma. See you later. Well, I guess that's the story, Mr. Mooney. No, now, wait, Stretch. Uh, Mr. Snodgrass, if you'll let me tell you something about Clay City... Nothing uh... doing. I ain't taking any chances with my only child's happiness. I... I love this boy. <laughs> Get out of here and help your ma in the kitchen. Yeah. You see, uh, Mr. Moon... I love you too, Papa. <laughs> I know, I know. Now, Mr. Mooney, if you... Stretch, what are you hanging around for? Kiss me, Papa. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he's such an affectionate little jerk. A youngster. <laughs> We've always been quite close. Hey, excuse me, Daddy, but I saw your car outside and the door was open, it's so my I... daughter, Harriet. Harriet, go away, child. But, Daddy... Just a minute. I thought you said that Stretch was your only child. Stretch? Your brother, Harriet. <laughs> now go on out into the kitchen. Your mother will explain the whole thing to you. Oh, is Mother here? Stop the question. Just go in and Stop see if Mother's on the table, here. Pa. Well, if it isn't... Me... Yipe! <laughs> oh, Harriet, how nice to see you. Why don't you go home to your mother? Her mother? <laughs> she did come home to her mother, Ma. <laughs> but I don't understand. I guess it's time we told you, Harriet. I am your mother. <laughs> your father and I, uh, your father and me, We've been secretly married for 16 years. But I'm almost 17. I'm over 17. I was hoping you wouldn't notice it. <laughs> what is this all about? Mrs. Snodgrass, I demand to know the truth. Mrs. Snodgrass? Uh, you might as well know the whole story, Harriet. As a poor but honest immigrant, I entered this country illegally. Your mother and I started out from the old country together. But I, your mother, couldn't make it. <laughs> they shot me at the border. Of course, years later, I was smuggled into the country. With a group of Oriental laborers. <laughs> Oriental laborers? Don't look down your nose at me, girl. I helped build Boulder Dam. <laughs> Here, Mrs. Snodgrass. Mrs. Snodgrass? Miss Brooks ain't Mrs. Snodgrass. My mother's Mrs. Snodgrass. Yeah, <laughs> Go away, boy. We're busy. But, Mr. Conklin, I waited in Miss Brooks' classroom like she said. And... Mr. Conklin? Miss Brooks? Say, what is all this, and who are you? Well, I'm Stretch Snodgrass. Uh, Stretch Snodgrass? Oh, did you call me Biff? Biff? <laughs> are you Biff Mooney? Well, I was when I came in here, but right now I was... <laughs> oh, it was absurd to think that this ridiculous scheme would work. This is the real Stretch Snodgrass, Mr. Mooney. If he wants a transfer, I guess there's nothing we can do to stop him. And after all that iodine I used at the border. 
But I won't need no transfer now, Mr. Conklin. That's what I come over to tell Miss Brooks. I talked to the manager of the football team just now, and he said they're getting another uniform, so Waller can be on the team, too. Oh, boy, that's gr great, Stretch. Hey, instead of living with your aunt, you can move in with me. You can move in with me. <laughs> you can move in with... You can sleep in the gym. <laughs> As our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after the smoke had cleared away, and also Walter Stretch and Harriet, Mr. Conklin and I took a very bewildered Biff Mooney by the arms and pointed him toward the nearest streetcar. And now, Mr. Mooney, you may return to your unscrupulous employer and tell him that once again he has been soundly defeated by superior brain power. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Conklin, I, I did get a contract from Mr. Brill, but if he's going to get me into things like this all the time, I've got a good mind not to sign it. Well, if you'll excuse me now... Uh, uh, hold, hold on there, boy. You say you haven't signed your coaching contract with Clay City? That's right, sir. Well, well. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mooney, why don't we have dinner together at my place? There's something I'd like to discuss with you. Why, I guess that could be arranged. Fine. We'll have dinner at eight. You care to join us, Miss Brooks? No, thanks. I'm going to Clay City tonight to see the fireworks. Uh, fireworks? Unless I've miscalculated, if you and Biff are having dinner at eight, Mr. Brill should be blowing his top at nine. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Frank Nelson, and Leif Erickson. Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways, and whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new palm olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get palm olive brushless or palm olive lather shaving cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.